This story starts with a tragedy. When five innocent children were kidnapped from Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, and no one could find them. Time flew. But despite their efforts, the police were still unable to find any information about the missing children. And then, one day, three strangers, who were driven by the same desire to uncover the truth, decided to start their own investigation. It was hard to say, was it a coincidence, or was it intended by fate? But on the same day, in the same place, these three strangers met each other. And that place was the pizzeria from where the children were kidnapped. Among those strangers was a police detective by the name Brian Clark, the person who couldn't just witness the unsuccessful work of his colleagues and decided to start his own investigation off the book. Another stranger was a private detective by the name Jeremy Fitzgerald, a master of his craft who was hired by a mother of a missing child. The last stranger was me, Linda Jones, a news reporter from Arkham Advertiser, the person who was planning, no matter what, to discover the truth and find the missing kids. And also to find out what really happened to my colleague and good friend, Ben Richard, who was brutally murdered while working on this case before me. Since we all had the same goal, we decided to join our forces and discover the truth behind the children's disappearance together. Yet, there are secrets, doors to which should never be opened. Our team consisted of four people. There was me, Brian, Jeremy, and Vincent. Vincent was a humble and quite unsociable man who was working for Brian. While being undercover, he was working as a day shift security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria and was providing us with useful information. Our target was the owner of the pizzeria, Daniel Smith, or rather to say his office. Based on Vincent's information, there was a secret room located in that office, behind which we were expecting to find the missing children, or at least some information about them. To get in that secret room, you had first to press a hidden button beneath Daniel's table. That would set off a mechanism, which would open a way to the locked door. A key to that locked door was always with Daniel Smith on his neck. Yet, that was not a big problem for us, as almost every lock could be easily broken. And luckily, I was a specialist in that. As for Daniel Smith himself, not much was known about him. Only that a few years back, he inherited the family business from his father after he died. Daniel Smith also had a younger brother, by the name Fritz Smith. Yet he had gone missing several months ago, and nobody had seen him since then. According to Brian's words, Daniel Smith was a true evil in the flesh, the person who we should all be afraid of. Brian used to interrogate him several times in the past, and based on his words, never in his life has he seen such an evil and dangerous look as he witnessed in Daniel Smith's eyes. But Daniel Smith was not our main problem. Something else, created by him, was causing a bigger threat to us. And because of those things, 
we were not able to simply break into the pizzeria in the middle of the night. Hard to imagine how Daniel Smith was able to create those animatronics and make them freely move around the pizzeria during the night. But in case they saw someone, they would immediately attack him. Due to that, one thing was obvious. Getting in there during a night without any help from inside would be too dangerous. But we quickly managed to find a solution to this problem. Through the entire week, every night, we were actively making diversions near the pizzeria, and those kind of actions eventually would achieve their goal, as it forced Daniel Smith to hire a night shift security guard to look after the pizzeria and straight away inform him if anything happens. And thanks to our efforts, Jeremy was hired to this position as a night shift security guard. Yet even though we now had our people inside, still, Getting into Daniel Smith's office turned out not to be an easy task. Starting on the first night, everything went not according to plan. Jeremy said that it was too dangerous for me to get inside of the building, as he still could not understand how exactly those animatronics were moving around the pizzeria and with what time frame. okay down there. Well, there's one way to find out. Hey, Jeremy, are you still alive down there? Of course. Do you already expect me to die soon? Who knows, who knows. So, how are things down there? Well, right now, I look at the monitors, drink coffee, and play with a mask of a... I think it's a bear. Yep. With the mask of the bear? Yeah, I know. It might sound funny, but according to the pizzeria owner's words, if those animatronics see me, I have to put it on straight away, since then they will consider me as one of their own and won't try to attack me. Of course, it does sound stupid, but just in case, I keep it close to me. It does sound funny. Anyway, keep us informed if something happens. Will do. Over. What do you think? Will we find those five missing kids in there? I hope. And by the way, there were actually six of them. Six? Yes, the boy named Timmy. It was a quite old and very complicated case, way before me. All I know is that that missing kid, how to say this properly, he was not mentally healthy, and due to that, almost zero information was presented to the public. That is weird. I had done some research before, but haven't seen anything about the sixth one. This is strange. Trust me, I know the feeling. But we live in Arkham, and here, strange things are common. But don't worry, I bet soon we will find those kids or at least some information about their fate. We just need to get into that room. We will. That's the spirit. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for your advice, Vincent. I'll be sure to do so. Okay, let's see, what's going on down there? Hmm? Where did you go? Smith was not lying, and the mascot mask did help. But as we soon will find out, there was something else in that pizzeria, 
which would not be fooled by that mask. <laughs> On the second night, things went smoother, as I was able to sneak in. Yet, as soon as I got in, new obstacles appeared in my way. Despite the fact that Jeremy was assured that he accurately learned the behavior and movement routes of those animatronics, as soon as I got in, they all began a targeted hunt for me. All right, Linda, it seems to be clear. You may go. It is impossible to convey the shock I felt when I saw them. I was certain that I was doomed. Yet to my surprise, they stayed motionless. For more than three hours, I had to be in that room with them, all the time staring at their terrifying appearance, while being afraid to look away, and at the same time, hearing constant footsteps behind the door. Imagine how I didn't lose my mind that night. In the end, when it all went quiet, Jeremy helped me to get out from that horrible room. As later on we would find out from Vincent, those were the old models of animatronics from the previous pizzeria, who were kept here for spare parts. able to reach Daniel Smith's office. But at least now I had some knowledge of what to expect from this place. At least I believed so. But I was wrong. As on the third night, we had faced new and more serious problems. All right, I think you're clear to go. Just wait for my signal and then rush towards the door next to you. Okay. Ready? Steady, and... What in the world? Come on, go away already. And who in the world are you?
hear me? Is it clear? Can I go? Hey guys, what's going on down there? Do you need my help? No, it is better for you to stay in the car and make sure that we don't have any unexpected visitors. I'll try to find out what is going on down there on my own. to describe what we witnessed that night. Was it just a malfunction? Or something else that made the older versions of the animatronics start a hunt for us? Based on Vincent's words, there was no way old animatronics could be activated as there was not a power source in them. Yet, we were certain in what we witnessed that night. And those visions of the girl. She was among the missing kids. What was really going on in that pizzeria? Yet, despite all the difficulties and fears, we were still not planning to give up. But on the fourth night, things went even worse. Those things are trying to break inside, but I managed to hold them off. Hold on there. I'll try to distract them. I think there's no need in that. I managed to build a small barricade here, so it should withstand. You better try to get to Daniel's office. Okay. We did manage to survive that night, physically. As for our mental condition, well, here everything was worse. It was already hard to understand what was real and what was just a trick of our imaginations. For some reason, animatronics in Pizzeria were acting differently. Those who were newer models were simply wandering in the Pizzeria at night and only tried to attack when they noticed a human. While older versions of animatronics were purposefully trying to get to Jeremy, and it seemed that only he was interesting to them. This all had something to do with that weird-looking animatronic in the form of a puppet, who was definitely in charge of the others. And those visions that it showed me, in all of them, I have seen a missing girl by the name Elsa. That same girl whose mother hired Jeremy to find her. All of this was so confusing. But on the other hand, there were five missing kids 
and the same amount of animatronics right now were trying to get to Jeremy. What if? But that would then mean that we are already too late. No, no, I don't want to believe in that. The fifth night was expecting us ahead. The night when we finally achieved our goal. Most likely, I won't be able to get out of this one. So here's what you should do. Straight away, go to the office of Daniel Smith and finish what we started. What? No! I am not leaving you! Listen to me, don't worry. Just use the opportunity you have right now and finish this. I'm sure you understand that and tell Elsa's mother that I did the best I could to find her daughter. Jeremy? <laughs> Jeremy! Goodbye, Linda. <laughs> This is you. And that close to you is Emmy, Felix, Thomas, and Carl. End all of this. Please. We are not your enemies. We only want to find those who are responsible for what happened to you and punish them. Your families have not forgotten about you, and they still hope that you will return home. Elsa, your mother hired this man to find you. out to be true. Those were souls of the missing kids in the animatronics. And not only did they allow us to go, but also helped us in clearing the path to Daniel Smith's office. I was able to pick the lock, and finally, we managed to get inside of that room. But, as it turned out, we were not alone in there. dark in here. I'll try to find the light switch. Okay. <sighs> Linda, are you okay? Yeah. 
I uh, am fine. Oh, how in the world did he get in here? What? Another door? Why hasn't Vincent mentioned anything about it to us? No idea. Look, he is still alive. What are you doing here? Leave at once. I've already called the police. Jeremy, grab the key from his net and open the door. I'll press the button beneath the table in the meantime. All right. What? No! What are you doing? Stop! I... By no means, do not open that door. That wits all behind. Please, please, stop until it's too late. You have no idea what you're doing. Stop. I... No, you have to stop. I beg you. If you need money, they're, they're take from the table. Just do not open the door. There are moments in this life when you are so confident in the rightness of your actions that not even for a second do you consider the option that you might be wrong. And this kind of blindness sometimes might lead to a very tragic turn of events. All right, let's see. What's hidden behind this door? Linda, it's better for you to stay here and keep an eye on Daniel, just in case. As you say. Jeremy, what do you see in there? Any signs of the kids? No. There's just a table with some sort of chest on it. And there's some creepy looking animatronic as well, but it seems that he's motionless. We're on the same side with them now, correct? Looks that way. Please, stop him until it's too late. Okay, I'll try to find out what's inside this chest. What in the world?
I never told anyone the story about this kid. But considering the fact that you're unconscious and most likely will not be getting out of here alive, I will finally reveal it. As no longer can I be silent about their crazy actions, they've locked him in a dark room where was nothing but him. The old model of animatronic Freddy and pure darkness. They kept him there for three days without food and water. And then they released hungry rats in there who immediately attacked the poor child. But that boy was not planning to give up without a fight. He managed to kill the rats and then he ate them. With each new day, he was becoming weaker. While my crazy brothers were constantly releasing new hungry rats into his room. It all ended after two weeks. In some way, as that child was no longer alive, yet neither was he dead, he became something else. Something that has started this nightmare. After all, I was never like them. This mad thirst for violence and cruelty. This belief in the old ones. Why, why did my younger brothers have to follow the footsteps of our father? Brothers? What are you talking about? You only have one brother. There is also a stepbrother. The one that used to always clean after Fritz. Listen to me. We have to try and stop him before he gets outside. Otherwise, dozens will die. Bullets will not stop him. Only fire again. Please, I need your help, as I'm not in the condition to fight him. Up there on the shelf, you may find alcohol bottles. Out of them, you may create a Molotov cocktail. You'll find lighter fluid there as well, near the ashtray. I suppose you understand what I'm asking you to do. In the meantime, I'll look after you, friend. All right, I'll do it. Thank you. If you knew how to stop that thing, why did you keep it in that room? It's not easy. Only he could stop my brothers from entering that room, as there's something in there that by no means should get into their hands. Until more innocent people die, I'll look after your friend. And as soon as you return, I give you my word, I'll answer all of your questions.
take Jeremy and get out of here. Brian? But how? Oh, Linda. Please be so kind to wait for a moment. I have to end something. always clean up your friends. According to Brian's words, Daniel Smith was a true evil in the flesh. What do you think? Will we find those five missing kids in there? There were actually six of them. That is weird. I had done some research before, but haven't seen anything about the sixth one. Hey Jeremy, are you still alive down there? Of course. Do you already expect me to die soon? Who knows, who knows. So, how are things going? Linda, I'm so glad to see that you're alive. Why? So you could kill me yourself? What? I would never hurt you. Yet, I cannot say the same about my younger brother. Don't worry, you're just paralyzed. I just... I couldn't let you go before I confessed to something. You see? I am not who you think I am. Daniel Smith was never a bad guy in this story. We were. We kept Daniel here only for fun's sake. Just like his father, back in Circus Pizza Baby World. But the time has come to get rid of him. By the way, don't worry about Jeremy. He is still alive and very soon will be held responsible for everything that happened here. surprised to see that you made it so far. You also managed to end that golden beast that Daniel kept around to maintain us. Impressive. But as far as I understood, you had some help from local inhabitants. Elsa and her small gang. Those sneaky souls who still refuse to give up and continue to fight us back. Elsa's soul is innocent. That is why we can't control her. For now. But we will find a way how to change that. And you know what? You might help us in that. That emotional connection that you and Elsa managed to establish. It might just do the trick. But first, you will have to die. Goodbye, Linda. And don't get cold in here. story will have such a horrifying and sad end. Well, right now, I look at the monitors. We are not that and enemies. pursuing the right goals and only having good intentions, you may achieve completely the opposite results. When not good triumphs over evil, but 
the opposite. But sooner or later, they will pay for their crimes. They have to, as there will be those who will put an end to this evil. Once and for all. Unfortunately, I will not live to see that day. sincere person who believed in good. Yet on that night, it was evil that had triumphed over good. And in that moment, when Linda's last breath left her body, also with it, vanished all the kindness and trustfulness that was in Elsa. And instead of those feelings came anger and cruelty. The events that happened after were merciless and bloody, but let's hear about them from Elsa herself and for us to have a full picture, let's travel back to that day when Elsa and other children were kidnapped by the so-called Purple Man. I still remember that beautiful day when me and my mom came to this magical place. What a day it was! Happiness, joy, and laughter were everywhere. It was the first time I saw Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy. Oh, how miraculous it all was! You show up. True evil in the flesh. The cunning devil who kidnapped me and many others. The monster who we started calling the Purple God. Pizzeria's Playroom. That was the place where you kidnapped us. And that was the place where you had your secret room. I always knew that people were searching for us. For days and nights, we were screaming and calling for help. Help us! Help! We are here! Hoping that someone would hear us. heard us. And help never came. However, I didn't lose hope, as I always knew that I would get out, no matter what. And then, one day, by some miracle, you forgot to lock the door. And we managed to escape. Yet, our freedom didn't last for long. As it was all just a part of your sick plan. All the doors were locked. 
while you were calmly pursuing and capturing us. other kids lost their hope and accepted their fate, I still was not planning to give up. Anger and hatred filled my soul towards you because of everything you had done to us. I knew that I would get out of this room and get my revenge no matter the cost. My soul will not rest until you receive your deserved retribution. Hours turned to days, days turned to months, months turned to years. We did not manage to escape, and no one rescued us. My body has been long dead, but my soul was still alive. The soul which was now driven by only one desire. Revenge. And I was not alone. Through decades, our souls tried to get me. You always manage to escape. There were a lot of deaths during this time, some caused by your actions, and some by ours. Because of you, we became monsters ourselves. Monsters who brought horror and death. You thought that you were invincible. Yet with every year our powers got stronger. While you were getting older and weaker. And in the end we managed to get you. Finally, you got what you deserved. You always used to laugh in the face of death when you tortured and killed others. Yet now, when you face the death yourself, where is that smile? There is none. There is only fear and pain in your eyes. And while your body is bleeding out, and you are almost at the last breath, I finally feel that our souls can rest in peace. At last, we are free. As for you, your soul will never find peace. Eternal torment and suffering awaits you, and the dungeon you created for others will become your prison from now on. for revenge, 
that you completely lost any sense of clear thinking. And I like that. As that is what we need. A cold-blooded weapon at our disposal. You know, it took me and Brian quite some time to figure a way how to force your souls to leave your animatronic bodies. And finally, now your souls will be ours. I wonder what would Linda say if she saw you right now about who you've become. Well, it doesn't matter. Time for you to join the others. Very soon, Elsa, we shall speak again as we have an important role prepared for you. Michael, you fulfilled your task perfectly. Not only you managed to destroy your animatronic bodies, but also made them to believe that you were me. I am proud of you. Now rest and get used to your new body, as something special is about to start soon. Good day, Miss Scott. I'm Ben Richards, reporter for the Arkham News. I was informed that you're ready to talk about the events that happened last night in a place called Fosbear's Fright. Is that right? Yes, I am. Though, I'm not so sure that you'll believe me. Most likely when I finish my story, you'll think I've lost my mind and I should be locked in Arkham Asylum, but I don't care. One way or another, people should know the truth. Yet, before I start, Give me your word that you'll print everything as I've told you, word by word, despite the fact that some details you may find weird and unrealistic. Of course, Miss Scott. You have my word. You may begin. Yesterday in the evening, I received a mysterious phone call from an unknown person to me. He introduced himself as Mr. William Afton and told me that, presumably, he had information about the whereabouts of my partner, Jonathan Schmidt, who went missing two years ago. Isn't that the same Jonathan whose brother, I believe Mike Schmidt, got brutally murdered in the old Freddy Fosbear's pizzeria? Yes, that's him. Two years ago, his younger brother Mike started working as a night shift security guard in Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. For five days, he used to tell Jonathan that it seemed to him that animatronics that were in the pizzeria used to become alive during the night and were trying to get him. Of course, Jonathan used to think that Mike was just imagining things due to a lack of sleep. Yet, after the fifth night, a torn apart body of Mike was discovered in the maintenance room. It seemed that someone, or something, was trying to put Mike inside of one of the animatronic suits, which didn't have proper space for a human body. As for the animatronics themselves, they were motionless, standing on the stage, all covered in Mike's blood. In the end, we did not manage to find any signs of someone breaking into the pizzeria. Neither were there found any malfunction signs in the animatronics. Only now I know the whole truth and what really happened that night. But soon, you shall understand everything yourself. After Mike's death, Jonathan became obsessed with the desire to find those who were responsible for this tragedy. Through days and nights, he was doing interrogations, 
checking archives and gathering all possible information about Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. He became so close in himself and eventually fully isolated from others, including me. And then, one day, he just disappeared and was never seen again. And in that moment, when I already lost any hope of finding him, I was contacted by Mr. William Afton, who said that he knew where Jonathan was. Based on his words, it was dangerous to have this conversation over the phone, and due to that, he asked me to meet him in person. And even though it was too foolish and reckless from my side, I straight away went on this meeting. As far as I understand, something went wrong. Yes, you can say so. Come on! Same here. No connection. No internet. It seems that someone really doesn't want us to leave this place. Hey, bro! Let's try to lift it up together. I don't think that will be possible. You'll only waste your strength. This door weighs about a ton. There's no way you can lift it. At least without proper tools. Well, in that case, we will have to find another way out of this place. Sounds like a good idea. When I arrived to the meeting spot, instead of William Afton, I met a group of people unknown to me who were also invited here by Mr. Afton. But as soon as all of us gathered inside, without any warning, the main door closed behind us, therefore locking us inside. At the start, we thought that it was just some sort of joke or a spoof, at least we used to think so. Until, in a search for answers, we reached a security room. Whoever lured us here definitely wasn't planning to let us leave this place alive. There was also a message left on the wall. It stated that six of us would die that night. And starting from midnight, every hour, one life would be taken away. This kind of threat, of course, sounded weird, considering that there were seven of us, and I was armed. Yet still, I decided that we should be on alert. Also, I had to find out who the other six people in the room with me were, and what connection did they have with William Afton and this place. May I have your attention, please? As we are stuck here for some time, let's introduce ourselves to each other and tell how we ended up here. I'll start. My name is Fiona Scott. I'm a detective from our Arkham Police Department. Today, I was contacted by Mr. William Afton, who promised to provide me with important information about one person who disappeared two years ago and was never seen since then. That's the reason why I'm here. Now I want to know, why are all of you here? I'm a journalist. Right now I'm writing a big article about Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria and its dark past. Today Mr. Afton was planning to share with me some details about mysterious murders that happened in this place many years ago. Yet it seems, something went not according to the plan. By the way, my name's Ryan. Hmm, this is strange. I was also invited here by Mr. Afton. Based on his words, in the old maintenance room he had found a letter addressed to me from Joshua Smith. He was the founder of Freddy Fazbear's Restaurants and a good friend of mine. Joshua Smith? Didn't he die many years ago under mysterious circumstances? You could say so. 
My name is Henry, by the way. Since all of us talk about Mr. Afton, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Emma Green. What I do and where I work is none of your business. Let's just say I'm the person who has the power and the money. And today... Yeah, we can definitely see that. Please do not interrupt me. As I was saying, today I was going to close down this place, once and for all. And then that Fazbear's World theme park as well. I do this due to my personal reasons. I was supposed to meet here with my assistant Kevin, so we could hand in the notice to Mr. Afton that this building will be closed and demolished. Yet instead of my assistant, I met all of you here. This is actually good, since this means that Kevin is outside right now and definitely has called for help already. You sure don't like this place, madam. Well, my name is Nathan. I'm a mechanic. Mr. Afton called me here to inspect some old animatronic model, which he had discovered in the abandoned warehouse, and if it is possible, fix it. As for the glasses, I had a serious eye injury back in the days. I see. What about you two? Why are you here? My name is Eva. I am a designer. William Afton hired me so I could help him to give a new look to this pizzeria, and that is why I am here today. I'm Max. I was hired by Mr. Afton to work as the night security guard. I was supposed to watch security cameras and make sure that no one is stealing anything. Today is my first day here. Yet considering what happened to the previous security guard, I'm definitely not planning to work here. Have any of you actually seen Mr. Afton in person? No, I only talked with him over the phone. Same here. Over the phone. Same. That is the point. This Mr. Afton appeared out of nowhere and no one knows anything about him. Yet, somehow, he managed to become an owner of this place. Hmm. Does anyone know what happened to the previous owner of this place? His name was Fritz Smith. He disappeared a year ago, and there's been no information heard about him since. Yeah. This all sounds interesting. All these conspiracy theories. But maybe we should stop chatting and start searching for another way out! There definitely should be another exit since I really don't like this place. As soon as we get out, you can chat and have discussions about this place as much as you want. I agree. I feel really scared of this place, not to mention that midnight is almost here. It's already midnight. I might know where we can find an additional exit. There used to be another restaurant here, right below this. What the hell is that? All right, everyone stand behind me. carry it with me, just in case. There are reasons to that. Don't worry, detective lady. I got you covered. We've got you covered. up in the air and state your name. I am from the police, so don't make any sudden moves. Listen! 
Listen, pal. There are seven of us here, so you better listen to the lady, or this might end up badly for you. Just a second. Seven of us tried to fight the thing. We used pistols, axes, even our bare hands against it. But there was no effect. That thing was simply ignoring all damage it received from us. And then, it grabbed Max, and in the split of a second, it broke his neck. And then just turned and walked away with his body. I shot the whole mag in his back. I shot that thing in the legs, the back, head. But again, no effect. And that was just the first time. More came after it. Every hour, it was returning back to take away one of us. But let's follow events in the correct order. As soon as that thing went away, lights went back up. Everyone was shocked and scared, including me. Yet, despite feeling fear, I knew that we had to get ourselves together and find a way out of this place as fast as possible before that creature returned again. Did you manage to figure out what attacked you? At that moment, no. There were a lot of theories and guesses, but all of them seemed weird and unrealistic, and some even crazy. So, what was it then? Not now. You'll understand everything yourself through my story. So, as soon as that creature left and we recovered from the shock, a decision was made to return back to the security room. Cameras were already working in this place, so at least through them, we could get some understanding of what was going on around us. I propose we stop discussing what that thing was and start thinking on how to get out of here. Henry, I believe you mentioned something about a second exit from this place? Yes, at least I hope it still exists. In 87, there was a huge fire in this place, and... Lots of stuff was rebuilt after- We should check it out anyway, as I don't want to sit here and wait until that thing returns. We still have 45 minutes left. How are you so confident about it? Anyway, we should act. I agree. Yet it would be logical if someone stays here and, through the cameras, tracks down the situation in this place. Any volunteers? Even though the idea to separate is not the best one, it does sound wise. I'm ready to stay here, but not alone. I'll also accompany you. Seems to me that it would be safer to stay here, rather than walking through those dark corridors. You sure are a brave person, Mr. Ryan. In one of the boxes, I managed to find these walkie-talkies. With them, at least we shall be in contact. Good. All right then. Henry, lead the way. that Henry used to know this place really good. 
At the start, I also found that suspicious, but as soon as I've heard his story, everything made sense. I suppose you are wondering, how do I know the structure of this place so good? Truth is, I was among those people who built it. Well, the original version of this place. As I told you before, Joshua Smith was a good friend of mine. And when he asked me to help him with the realization of his dream, I straight away agreed to do it. And that dream was to build the best pizza attraction in town to his beloved daughter, Anna. Yeah, I know, it might sound a little bit absurd, but after Joshua tragically lost his wife, Anna became his only source of happiness in this life. Even despite the fact that Joshua had two older sons as well by the name Fritz and Daniel, it's just seeing Anna's happy smile was the best cure to Joshua in handling those hard times. For a year, we were enthusiastically building his dream. While Joshua was dealing with construction tasks, I was creating first prototypes of the animatronics, which were expected to be the main feature of our pizzeria. Oh, and you should have seen how Anna was happy about it. And with her, Joshua, me, and the whole construction team, it seemed that Anna's happy smile could charge with positive energy almost anyone. Well, except for her brothers. For some reason, Fritz and Daniel were not sharing that same happiness as everyone else did. And then one day, that second tragedy in Joshua's life happened. It was hard to say. Were the children responsible for that? Or was it just an accident? But one morning, while playing hide and seek with her brothers, Anna decided to hide inside one of the animatronics. That model was still unfinished and springs inside of it were not stable. This new tragedy, well, I suppose you can imagine yourself what it did to Joshua. Straight away, he isolated himself from everyone, even his kids. He fired all the staff. And for days and nights, he used to stay locked inside of our unfinished pizzeria. Sometimes he was only seen in our local library, where he used to take books with a very strange and even terrifying content. This kind of behavior lasted for half a year. And then one day, Joshua unexpectedly contacted me. He told me that he wanted to finish what we had started and open the pizzeria in Anna's memory. At the start, I was really happy to hear this kind of news as I thought Joshua finally recovered from the tragedy. But things were not as simple as I had assumed. When I saw Joshua, straight away I noticed that something had changed in him. Yes, he was still that same looking Joshua, yet his eyes and the way he spoke it was very unlike him, but was also weird. He adopted a child by the name Brian, who seemed to be always near Joshua and almost never left him alone. And even though that boy was around eight or nine years old, if he looked at you, you would feel straight away a sense of horror and danger. Once I was going to Joshua's office and overheard how he was having a conversation with someone or something. The voice that talked to him, I don't even know how to describe it. Let's just say it was hard to call it a human. While being driven by anxiety and curiosity, I went inside and to my surprise, I only found Joshua and Brian there. But the way they looked at me, even now, I still see those eyes in my nightmares. With every day, the situation was getting worse. No longer was I feeling safe inside of the pizzeria. Right after Joshua, something happened to his younger son, Fritz. He also changed, and now whenever he was staring at you, you felt the fear and danger of evil presence. 
Also, for some reason, a lot of strange changes were made in the pizzeria's construction plans. Additional rooms, underground premises, and hidden chambers were added. Not to mention that Joshua asked me to make so many adjustments to the design of the animatronics. Some really strange adjustments. It was hard to say with what kind of intentions this pizzeria was being built, but definitely not for pleasure and fun as it was originally intended, and definitely not in the name of Anna. One day I decided that I could no longer be a part of this madness, and I left, and I broke all ties with Joshua. Yes, you might think that I acted like a coward and left my friend alone in that nightmarish situation, but to be honest, that was no longer a person I used to know. There was someone else behind his face. And that letter, which was allegedly left to me by Joshua, I guess in some way I was hoping that it would explain at least a little bit what really happened to my friend. But anyway, here we are. This is the place. Yes, that door should lead to the old premises of the pizzeria. All right, let's go there then. You go. I'll stay here and cover the exit. Can you please come over here? Is that what I think it is? Oh no, this is bad. We should leave this place as soon as possible. Guys, I'm afraid I have bad news. What kind of additional difficulties did your group face? As it turned out, the second exit from the pizzeria was immured. Of course, it was foolish of us to expect that everything would be that easy. And although it might have seemed that we were doomed, Henry once again proposed a way out from this desperate situation. In that same room with the immured exit door was located an elevator, which led to the old maintenance rooms. Of course, there was no power in it, but luckily we had a mechanic in our group who could fix that. At the moment, we had two tasks before us. 
we had to activate power to the elevator and also eliminate the gas leak. As some of us already felt frustrations, head pains, and started seeing hallucinations, and it would only get worse. We divided into two groups. Me, Emma, and Henry went to eliminate the gas leak, while Nathan, Ryan, and Eva went to deal with the electricity issue. Be careful. We've been exposed to this gas for quite a while, so visual and auditory hallucinations might appear. I guess we're already old enough to distinguish what is real and what is a hallucination. Olivia? Why did you leave me, Emma? It is so cold and lonely in there. Why did you allow this to happen? You were supposed to protect me. It is your fault. It is your fault. Emma, is everything all right? Yes, everything is fine. I just... I think I saw someone. But it, but it doesn't matter. Let's catch up with Henry. Hold it! Just hold it! This thing is strong! I think... I don't think the door's gonna hold it! Don't worry. This door should hold. Let's not waste time. We should fix the electricity supply in that room as fast as possible and then leave this place before that thing returns. But if that thing is no longer trying to get to us, that means it's on its way for others. Good call. We should warn them. Copy. We will be prepared. Did you manage to fix the electricity problem? I need about five more minutes and then it is done. Copy. We shall meet you near the elevator then. All right. And once again, please be careful there. And the same to you, Eva. What if... What if it's a trap? That thing actually didn't go anywhere and it's just waiting for us behind the door. If it is so then we will have to fight our way out, as there are no other exits. And considering the fact that this thing already managed to do with the door, we will not be able to hide here for long. Perhaps there's an additional exit. What do you mean? Hmm. This might work. Help me with the ladder. I'll see what's in there. Just be careful there, Eva. What do you see in there? Hard to tell. It's too dark. I'll try to use the lighter.
little more and done. Oh. I know that look, Emma. Guilt haunts you. W what's wrong? We are all in the same boat right now, and the best thing we can do is to cheer one another up. Now, if something worries you, you can share that burden with us, and perhaps we will be able to help you. Olivia, that is the name of my younger sister, Eternal Fidget, who always liked to be naughty. Several years ago, she went missing in one of the Freddy Fazbear's pizzerias. And it all happened due to my inattentiveness. Since I, as always, was so busy in my thoughts about work, tasks, future projects, that I didn't pay attention to anything else around me. And due to that, didn't notice how Olivia slipped away from me. The whole town was looking for her. I've used all of my connections to find her. Even your police lieutenant, Brian Clark, was personally leading the search operations. But with no luck. And then, a year later, we finally found her. Since then, every day I live with an incredible sense of guilt that I let her down. I also swore that until I am alive, not a single Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria place shall open its doors to any new visitors. As soon as we get out of here, it shall be like that. I'll personally make it happen, and I'll also make sure that Mr. Afton answers for everything that happened here. You can count on me as well. I'll raise all of my connections. We'll not let this go unanswered. And trust me, Emma, one way or another, justice will prevail. And whoever that person is, whoever caused the evil to your sister, he will pay for what he has done. That I promise. Thank you, to both of you. All right, leak is fixed. Now we can go to the elevator. The others are probably waiting for us there. Good then, let's go. sure acted strange. Based on your story, it could have easily killed all of you at once. Yet for some reason, it only took away one of you at a time. Did you manage to figure out why it acted like that? Yes. Emma had a theory about that. She thought that this creature was hunting us, not based on his own will, and that most likely someone was using him like a trained hunting dog. The question remained, who was giving out the orders? I'm glad to see you're alive. Sadly, not all of us. We know about Ava. How did it happen? That thing. It attacked her from the ventilation shaft. We didn't even manage to do anything. Didn't manage to do anything? Instead of standing still and staring on how Eva was pulled away, you could have helped me. If not for your cowardice, we could have saved her. Maybe if you yourself tried harder, then maybe she'd be- That's it! Gentlemen, please save your strength. Let us first get out of here, and then you are free to settle your conflict in any way you find suitable. Sadly, we can't help Ava anymore, but we can still help each other and leave this place together. 
before that monster returns. Doesn't this sound reasonable to you? Emma is right. Let's first leave this place before anyone else is taken away by that monster. Follow me, gentlemen. Alright, let's go down to our freedom. I'm surprised it still works and haven't fallen apart. Well, back in the days, they knew how to build stuff. survive that fall. Almost. Hold on, Henry. We're almost there. Th thank you, friends. And now the best thing you can do is to find a way out of here and bring help. No need to worry about me. I'll just rest here for a while and gather strength. What? No way! We are not going to leave you here alone. Don't even count on that. I'll stay with you. Thank you for your care. But you understand the same way as I, that I don't have much time left. And sadly, I'm... <coughs> and sadly, I'm not gonna make it. So the best thing you can do right now is save yourselves. Please, I ask you, let me go away peacefully with the thought that at least you managed to get out of this hell hole. And now, please, go. There's no need for extra words and Henry, don't you worry. That person who lured us here, I'll do all I can to make him pay for everything. Thank you. And now go. Just let me have some rest. gonna do now let's spread in two teams again and check all the rooms here there definitely should be an extra exit here good idea I'm definitely not going anywhere with him I'll go with Ryan are you sure about that don't worry Fiona if something happens I can stand up for myself all right let's not waste any time me and Nathan shall check the workshop room and you can then go check out the control module. Okay.
this is a hallucination, or if it's really you. But it, it, uh, it doesn't matter. For years I have dreamed to tell you, please forgive me for abandoning you in those hard times. Forgive me, my own. shaft. It might lead somewhere. I suggest we don't go there. It may be dangerous. You're brave as always, Ryan. Do you have family waiting for you back home? And that's why you avoid all kinds of dangers? So you can return back to them in one piece? wife. I mean, I had a wife. She is no longer. I'm, I'm sorry. No worries. Wow. Seems that Nathan managed to completely restore electricity in this part of the building. that feature was used. Definitely not for fun. Thing get here. It does not matter how it got here. What matters is that we have less than an hour before it comes back for another prey. We need to warn others and find exit fast. I think I know how we can stop it. How? Are you thinking about luring this creature into that room and then try an electricity trick? Hmm. It is a good idea, but how will we lure it there? I have an idea. You know, Ryan, it turns out you're not that bad.
Based on this draft, some animatronics were created with the goal of kidnapping children and hiding them inside of their suits. Damn, what the hell is going on in this place? Obviously nothing good. <laughs> it seems that we'll not find any exit here. Let's check other rooms. Do I imagine things, or is there actually a small animatronic standing in front of us trying to show us something? I've already seen him before. He is the one who warned us about the gas leak. We should follow him. Are you sure about that? Yes. This night is only getting weirder. Finally, you've arrived. I've been waiting so long for this moment. I understand you have a lot of questions, but we do not have much time left. They almost managed to gather the needed amount of souls. You have to stop them, and I know how to do that. Hold your horses. Before we do anything, first tell us who or what are you and what the hell is going on down here. We don't have- Everything is right. Without answers, we're not going to do anything. Fine. My name was Linda Jones. A long time ago, I was investigating a case about missing kids from this pizzeria. But my desire to learn the truth and achieve justice only got me and many others killed. Since evil that is responsible for all the horrors here has no limits in its cruelty, meanness, and lies. And all it is interested in is human souls, which it successfully gathered for several decades already. I don't quite understand. What are we dealing with here? While being heartbroken by the death of his beloved daughter, Anna, Joshua Smith decided to take extreme measures and started studying occultism. For days and nights from the darkness, he was trying to summon forces that would help him bring Anna back. And then, one day, something responded to him. And from the deepest corners of the darkness, they have arrived. They? Yes, those who do not have permanent names neither permanent forms, and can only be distinguished by their purple eyes. No permanent form? Correct. They may take the form of any victim whose soul is in their possession. All of this sounds very confusing. One thing can be said for certain about them. They are the personification of pure evil and cruelty. Two brothers whose souls are so dark that they can overshadow the sun. With lies and deceit, they possessed the mind of poor Joshua, and then started this nightmare. For decades, they used the torture and murder of people in order to imprison their exhausted souls, children especially, as their innocent souls were, for some reason, more valuable to them. And then all of these souls were trapped inside one of the mysterious chests that they brought with them from the darkness. What is most terrifying is that those trapped souls never achieve peace. Instead of it, they continue to be endlessly tortured. Mm -hmm. 
by experiencing their worst nightmares over and over again without cease. But why are they doing this? That I don't know. It is hard to understand the motives of their actions. Even that animatronic, who is pursuing you right now, is also a victim of their treacherous plans. He is being manipulated and forced to kill. But truly, that person used to be a good and kind person, who was only seeking the love and recognition from his stepfather, who used to ignore him for years, and then by deceit, sent him to certain death. Let me guess, that stepfather is one of the aforementioned brothers. Yes, his previous name was Fritz Smith. Now he names himself William Afton. Afton! That is what they do in this place. At first, they make you suffer, and then they turn you into their evil puppets. Through all the time that I was here, I only managed to save one soul. But then they spotted me and trapped me here inside of this motionless animatronic body. What is weird, I am not the first soul that was locked inside of this animatronic. Yet that soul left this prison a long time ago. Whose soul you managed to save? You know him very well, Detective Fiona Scott. It is your old partner, Jonathan Schmidt. As many before him, by deceit, he was lured into the pizzeria only to face his inevitable death. And then his soul was trapped in its personal hell. Where, as a kid, he was locked in his parents' house and used to be attacked by nightmarish-looking animatronics who would repeatedly tear him apart over and over again for days, months, years. Through all that time he spent in that hell, Sadly, most of his personality was lost, and the part that remained stayed on a childish level. Jonathan. But partly, he still remembers who he used to be and what being a good person means. And that is what is most important. He is willing to help you to put an end to this nightmare. You got your answers. Now please, I beg you, help me put an end to this evil. Of course, what needs to be done? You need to destroy the vessel where all the souls are stored. By that I mean the mysterious chest. It is located in a big hidden room in the office of Joshua Smith. The entrance to it you'll find behind Anna's picture. Yet when you get inside, you have to be careful since that place is guarded by another animatronic. She is another victim of this nightmare. Her name used to be Elsa. She was the first one who decided to fight that evil back, even after her death. But after decades of desperate struggle, the evil brothers still prevailed and not only took over her soul, but also forced her to follow their commands. Yet, I believe that I might be able to help you with her. I just need to get freed from my imprisonment. How can we help you in that? You need to destroy the body in which I am trapped. The best thing would be to use fire for that. And then you will have to do the same with the chest in which the other souls are trapped. Also, it would be better to completely burn this place down, so that their souls will definitely be able to leave this place and achieve peace once and for all. But how would we be able to get out of here? You will find the exit door in the same room where the chest is located. I'll show you the exact place. Don't you worry. I won't allow any more deaths in the walls of this terrible place. But you have to hurry. At any moment, one of the brothers might show up and try to stop you. So, as I was saying, you will need... Your friend is in mortal danger! Emma? One of you should immediately go help her. Jonathan will show you the way. 
while the other one should set me free. I'll go. Nathan, you're the smart mechanic. Help Linda, and then try to find a way how to burn this place to the ground. Fiona, wait! Good luck. Thank you. This is really bad. might seem hard to you, but please fulfill it. On the panel, there you will find a button with electricity sign. Press it and do not release until that thing dies, once and for all, as you can't allow that monster to kill anyone else after me. What? No, there has to be another way. I, I can't do that. I'm afraid this time there is no other way. I don't know what you are, and why you're doing this. But know this, I am not scared of you. All my life, I used to live by my own rules, and on my own terms, I shall end it. And I will take you with me. I am not scared of you, nor death. Why did you do this, Ryan? Why did you lock Emma with that thing? 
It had to be done. I do not expect you to understand me, but believe me, I had no choice. I had to do it. The reasons why I do all this are more important than even principles of morality. And what now? Now, I'll have to kill you. You know, there's still an alternative way out of this situation. We have found another exit from this pizzeria. You can come with us. I can't leave this place without her. was to return her back. That's why I made this desperate deal with Afton. I should have figured out that it was all just a lie. What are you talking about? Afton asked me to make sure that none of you would make it out of here alive. How foolish and stupid I was. Forgive me, Fiona. I honestly didn't want anything of this. All I wanted was just to see her again. Good news. I damaged several gas pipes, so it should be sufficient to... What happened here? Where's Emma? I truly feel sorry for you and your friends, but did you manage to find that secret room? Yes. As soon as I told Nathan about Emma and Ryan's faith, we straight away went to that hidden room. But what we found inside of it, nothing could have prepared us for that horror that we faced in there.
are no longer alone. here to do all right it is time to end all of this Jonathan forgive me all of you that I didn't manage to protect you is what human life means to those monsters. They made this place as a treasury of death. You have to burn this place. Over there you will find a door, which will lead you to your freedom. What about you? As soon as you destroy the chest in this place, we shall be free as well. It is all done. We can set this place on fire. Well, who wants to start the fire? since I've seen such a spectacle. Usually, people would boringly die without even trying to give a fight. But you, you are good. I even see you manage to join your forces with Linda and Elsa. That is impressive. Elsa and Linda, you have no idea how happy I am to see you again. Brian. Oh, I see you were even able to recognize me in this form. Impressive. Well, in this case, let's show you a familiar face. Not sure if you know this, but Elsa was the first soul that decided to rebel and fight us back. She also managed to unite others, and for years they actively tried to stop us. And we're sabotaging our work here. Same can be told about you, Linda, as well, by the way. And that is admirable. But ladies, you had your fun. Now it is time for you to return back to your friends. Kid souls. They were always ten times more valuable than adult ones. Yet there is so much fuss with them. What have you done with them? I returned them back to the place from which they impertinently managed to escape. Their souls belong to me anyway. On your place, I wouldn't rush to burn this place down. You see, all those souls that are locked in that chest, they have nothing good left in them. Now there is only desire to make others feel the same pain and suffering as they felt. And if you set them free, well, nothing good comes out of that. Not for you or anybody else, but especially for you, as most likely you would be torn apart instantly. So instead of that, let's make a deal. Good try, but meaningless. What are you? I'm afraid your human brain will not be able to understand that. Let's just say, a long time ago, Joshua Smith summoned us 
in the hope that we would return him his daughter. That fool thought that he could ask something from us, but he was wrong, as we were not genies from a magic lamp that would grant three wishes. Oh no, we do not give, we only take away. But it seems that that fact was not mentioned in those books that Joshua used to summon us. And where's your brother now? Sadly, William is occupied with other tasks right now. As you might have guessed, we gather souls from many places. And your souls were supposed to be the last ones for this place. To be fair, only one more soul is needed. Why do you have to spoil all the fun? Nathan! No! All right then. I think it is time to show you with what you are really doing. Based on this draft, some animatronics were created with the goal of kidnapping children and hiding them inside of their suits. I'm ready to stay here, but not alone. I'll also accompany you. I'm Max. I was hired by Mr. Afton to work as the nice security guard. But sooner or later, they will pay for their crimes. They have to, as there will be those who will put an end to this evil. Once and for all.
It's over. We made it. How are you holding out there? I'll be fine. Just need to rest a little bit. Damn. Never in my life have I seen such a big and beautiful fire. It sure is beautiful. That's the whole story. Hope you'll print this word by word as I told you. Of course, but I have one question. There used to be a second brother, that Fritz Smith, or correctly to say, William Afton. What happened to him? He's still out there. But don't worry, I'll find him and put an end to his crimes. But how are you planning to find him? As far as I understood, he can change his faces and appearances. It doesn't matter how, but I shall not rest until I find him. That's good to hear, but perhaps you will not have to search for him. As the person you are looking for is already here, I have to thank you, Fiona, as now I know what really happened that night. And believe me, you know, due to your actions, Fiona, not only my brother is now locked down in a very horrible place, but also my superiors are now very unhappy with the results of our work, and I'll have to work very, very hard to fix that, which means I'll need souls, way more souls.